Hey guys, how's it going? Milwaukee here. Not in the bedroom studio today. Today I'm out in um, my shop space uh, where since you've seen my crawler and you've seen that there's quite a bit of custom metal working on it um, as well as my uh, light bar that I did a video on, you will know that I, I like metal working and not to brag, but I'm pretty good at it. Um, so. I thought today I would show you some of my tools that I use. Um, some of them, not very expensive, you can get that will start you into model working, and other ones that will take more time to learn to use if you are going to use them. So, for starters, you're going to want some metal. Um, you can just search metal shops on Google and you will be able to find them, and you can get scrap metal just about anywhere side of the road, stuff like that. Depends on what kinds of stuff you're going to be doing. If you're doing more artsy stuff, scrap metal on the side of the road is great. If you're going to be doing stuff for your RC, trying to do more intricate stuff, um, you might not be able to find that kind of stuff. Um, the, the, the nice small pieces of metal for what you're trying to do. So, uh, small pieces of metal are good for um, RC stuff, you know, fabricating whatever little part you need. Um, but yeah, metal, just Google it. You can find scrap metal. You can find people on Craigslist that are just giving away metal if you need. So, uh, for starters, I guess a vise is the best, uh, one of the best tools you can use. There you go. This is my pony vise. It um, has a small anvil type thing on the back. And the model number is pony24545. So, I've had this vise for quite a while now. It served me quite well. A uh, little clamping thing there. It doesn't really work for me because it's old, but so I use a bar clamp on the side. But that is the first and probably most useful tool that you can have is a vise. Not really, not exactly a tool, but uh, um, great thing to have. The, if you're going to be metal working, you can't really start without. So that's done. Next up is a drill. Basic cordless drill. You can buy them for you know between thirty and sixty dollars at Home Depot or whatever. I use a cordless drill just because um, cords can kind of get in the way. But a corded drill works just as well. Drill bits. This is my largest set. It's not mine, it's my dad's, but uh, this is the largest set that I use. Okay. The largest set that I use has numbers 1 through 60, um, A through Z, and sizes uh, 1 16th through what is that? I think that's one half. So, quite a big set. Um, if I can get this thing to go down. You don't necessarily need a set this big. You can get one for maybe $10, $20 at Home Depot. Um, of just basic drill bit sizes, usually from 1 16th up to half, not in that many sizes in between, but enough to get you started. Um, that's for drilling holes, obviously. If you need to drill a hole, that's what you use. Cutting, hacksaw, all the stuff I do, I cut by hand. I don't use really any power tools, just a standard, I don't know how big this is, but just standard hacksaw blade. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just standard hacksaw you can get for not too much as well. Um, I guess next we should go with. Um, oh, another thing to add on to the drill bits and drills. Get. If you're going to be doing a lot of large drilling, get a drilling compound. Um, that helps cool and keep your drill bits um, sharp. You can use WD-40, but 
Uh, my dad happened to have uh, some of that laying around from Emco, and that's what I use and works pretty well. You don't have to use it all the time, just when you're doing big holes or you just basically don't want your piece to get too hot or whatever, you know. Um, pliers, also a great tool to have. I use two kinds for the most part, a basic lineman's pliers um, and a needle nose. Needle nose for fine work, lineman's for just grabbing on stuff and bending it on the vise. I have two pairs of lineman's and I would recommend using two, or having two I guess. Um, it just helps with, um, when you're trying to grab one thing with one hand and one thing with the other, like to twist things if you need to twist them. Um, that's pliers. Another kind of pliers, just more of a clamp, is a vice grip. Mm, change the size of the mouth with the screw at the back. There we go. And I use these um, mainly when I'm doing welding or brazing. That's usually what um, it's good for. Um, hammer. Um, for if you're drilling and your piece gets warped, you can take it to the back of the vise and just flatten it out. Get a nice um, flat piece. You can easily uh, eliminate tear out. I would recommend a ball peen hammer because if you use a regular framing hammer, um, if you whack on it too much, it'll shatter. So you want to be really careful and make sure you get a hammer that's designed for metalworking or Having metal against metal, basically. Uh, marking tools, a basic metal ruler, uh, Sharpie is also a good one, and a center punch. Don't use. I don't use this one that often, but it'll help. Punch, it'll punch a dot for you, and that will keep your drill bit nice and centered when you're going into a piece of metal. Um, another method of cutting is the shear. So this is just a basic pair of hand shears. This is a, I believe it's a, I think it's a right hand, and then I have a left hand and a straight shear in the drawer over there. Um, so you can use either a hand shear, which is the most cost effective and um, it's it's small, it's easy, you don't need to have anywhere really to put it. Um, I, however, tend to use the bench shear here. Bench shear here rhymes. Um, <laughs> so, basic shear, you can get, this, this is a, this is one kind, there's different kinds you can get, uh, where basically just pull on the handle, cuts your piece of metal, and there you go. Uh, you want to be careful about sharp edges with that guy. You want to make sure that you have a set of files on hand to uh, smooth out those edges. I recommend having a couple different types uh, being a flat, this one, having a flat file, uh, two sizes of round files. Um, you really only need one, but I have two, and I've used both of them for, you know, rounding out different sized holes. Wait. Smoothing out different sized holes. There we go. Uh, rat tail file. That's metal or wood. I think it's more for wood, but um, I've used that one as well. And also a triangle file. Great for making little notches that then you can use your round file to basically... So this will basically start a little notch, which will help your round file um, basically stay on track if you're trying to make like a, uh, what should we call it, like a, like a little divot thing in a piece of metal. Um, files are also a um, pretty cost effective thing that you can find used, you can get them online, at Home Depot, you know, whatever. Um, and the other thing that um, isn't a necessity, you can just use nuts and bolts if you want, is a rivet gun. Um, 
simple hand powered riveter. Um, basically pulls up on a shaft. So your rivet looks like a little nail with like a shank at the top. And so what it does is you put the you put the long end in and then when you when you um, press down, it grabs the shaft or the little basically shank or not shank, it grabs the piece and pulls it, flattening the bottom, which then grabs your piece of metal nice and tight. Uh, different sizes that you can use for different sized rivets. I use this size. You can't tell what size that is, but you know, whatever. Um, that's that. Um, let's see, I guess. Paper towels, good thing if you're wiping up messes that you make with the uh, tapping and drilling compound. And then moving on to the um, less essential things that uh, you can use. Uh, starting off with the caliper. Um, don't know what these go for. You don't need a big one. I don't use it. I don't use this particular caliper that often. Basically how it works is you have a head at the top that opens up, a little dial, there you go, you can tell, spins. You can clamp it, keep your measurements, and so on and so forth. You can measure the inner diameter with these, and the outer diameter of, or size or whatever of something with this. Usually come in a nice um, case like this. I would recommend not, I'd recommend buying one with a nice case like this, with nice uh, padding material, just to ensure, um, that it doesn't get damaged or broken. And then, let's see, tap and die set. Don't know what these go for either, um, but this is a tap and die set that my dad has. Um, just try not to spill it there. There you go. Um, taps are these things, these long pieces, and that is to put threads in a hole in metal. A die, the round things on the left and right, um, is to put threads on a um, on a metal shaft. This is the this is the die holder. This is the tap holder, and you twist it in the hole, and uh, makes your threads for you. Also, most will come with a thread sizer. If you need to get a size just right, you can use that. Um, if you do get a tap and die set, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend you using the tapping and drilling compound. It lubricates your, um, your tap and your hole so that it'll thread in real nice and it won't have very much, or it will have, um, much lower cutting resistance, basically. Because what those do is it, it cuts threads into the metal. So, um... You want to make sure that it's nicely lubricated and that it can stay sharp and cut well for future uses. Um, with all of this, gloves are a good one to have. Um, you, you can really use any kind of gloves, garden gloves. These are welding gloves, um, 24CL. Uh, I use these for brazing and uh, working with acetylene torches. Um, you can use them for, you shouldn't use them for anything other than metal and brazing and welding and stuff like that because it'll ruin the finish. These are real leather. I have some more heavy duty welding gloves um, for when I'm actually welding and stuff. Gloves, always a good thing to have. Um, next up is a torch. You can get map gas torch and um, you can get map gas torch at Home Depot, as well as a, I guess this is a burner, there you go, uh, burns a matic they're a pretty reliable brand, um, on off, and then uh, you pull that in, you press that button down at the top, 
it locks it in and you press that again pops up and releases this is I think their most expensive and like most fanciest model um, <laughs> and you can get other ones too you can get ones that just take a spark or two ignite or ones that have a button but that aren't quite as nice as this um, and to be honest with you I don't know the difference between this and another one but I think part of it is that or is the way that the that the flame basically comes out of the the nozzle I think that has partial or I think that has to do with it a little bit um, for brazing and welding good wire brush it'll only cost you a couple bucks you can use this for if you have a rusty piece of metal you can use this to scrape some of it off you can also use sandpaper steel wool uh, just another other types of abrasives uh, wire brush though good for welding brazing just to clean up your welds uh, once you're done and um, I think that's it so oh, one other thing uh, you don't necessarily need this, but if you already have a lot of these things, and maybe you need a type of um, anvil, like so. For example, if you're if you already have a vise, but it doesn't have an anvil on the back of it, um, you could go ahead and get an anvil if there was one on Craigslist or whatever that was um, inexpensive. But um, I happen to have. Excuse me, I happen to have one uh, behind me a little ways. I won't show it to you because you all know what an anvil looks like. I don't need to show you. Um, standard 55 pound anvil will get you a long ways. As I said, used, great option for a lot of the stuff. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to find people who are selling different arrangements and allotments of tools. And then for the most extreme, which will run you easily over five grand, <laughs> which I don't have, is um, a lathe. Uh, a lathe is, they're very expensive. They'll run you from, I mean, probably over five grand up to, you know, like $20,000. So they're very expensive. Um, they take a lot of maintenance um, to do. There's to really do things on them. You have to spend a lot on tools and like tooling equipment and coolant and all that stuff. You know, chucks and bits and whatever. Uh, I used we used to have a lathe. It was actually sitting on this bench here, but my dad sold it because it just wasn't. It was just taking up space. I think he got it because he just kind of thought it was cool. He wanted to play around with it. But uh, he got rid of it, I don't know, probably five, six years ago. Probably more than that, but <laughs> it was cool. I kind of remember it, and um, I wish he still had it to play around with because I would be using it all the time. Um, but anyway, I think that about does it for today. Um, as always, like and subscribe, share with your friends. I will see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.